الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Brothers and sisters in Islam here at uh, third space. I don't know where the first and the second is. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We look tonight at a very important subject, seldom discussed, of spiritual arrogance. In the history of religion, one people have distinguished themselves as the chosen people of Allah Most High. Banu Israel, the Jews, and they confer upon themselves, <laughs> wrongly so, the status that heaven is reserved for us. We are the chosen of the Lord Most High. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re refutes that in the Quran. <laughs> when he says, بَعْدَوُذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ مِنْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَنَّكُمْ أولياء لله من دون الناس فتمنوا الموت إن كنتم صادقين. If you indeed believe in this nonsense that you are the chosen of the Lord Most High to the exclusion of all of the rest of mankind, heaven is reserved for you. Then why don't you deserve? Why don't you seek death? Why don't you ask for death? If you truly believe in what you are saying. But they will never ask for death. They will never seek death. Because they know very well. The wickedness. Of their beliefs. What is surprising is today we have. Not one chosen people. But even within. The Muslim world we have many chosen people. Many groups within the world of Islam who hold the same views that we are the chosen. The spiritual arrogance has descended within our ranks. And this group believes we are rightly guided. And the rest are misguided. And their beliefs are stuck in concrete. You can talk and talk and talk to them. 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. You can't shift them. No. They're stuck in concrete. They'll never change. Spiritual arrogance is a dangerous thing. The belief that we are the ones who are rightly guided and the rest who are not with us are misguided is a dangerous thing. To hold yourself as an elite above the rest of Muslims and look down upon the others with some sense of scorn <laughs> is a dangerous thing. And tonight we're going to look briefly at the dangers. And we pray that Allah may take these words of ours to Ikhwan al-Muslim in Egypt I take these words of ours to those Sufi movements who support the government, the ruling party in Turkey. Take these words of ours to the Islamic movement, the Islamic party here in Malaysia. Take these words of ours to Tabligh Jamaat. <laughs> take these words of ours to the Salafi Muslims. Take these words of ours to all those within the fold of Islam who are adamantly confident 
that they are on the right path and the rest of us are somehow inferior to them and misguided. I want to begin with a startling example and to show how this malady the spiritual disease is connected with Akhirul Zaman. Akhirul Zaman is that time when Allah will release into the world Gog and Magog. And Allah will release into the world the Jad. But these distinguished Islamic movements around the world, you can wait and wait and wait and wait and wait you'll never hear them speak a single word about Dajjal about Gog and Magog and yet we are we are the rightly guided well the Prophet said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam about Akhiru Zaman and all those who are not blind, they still have eyes and they could see, would recognize the sign. He said about Akhiru Zaman, you're going to have the tall buildings. The tall buildings are here. People are competing with each other in the construction of high-rise buildings. Should I continue and give more and more and more and more evidence? To convince them that this is Akhiru Zaman? Or is it that they are deaf? They can't hear me. We've been lecturing to them for 20 years or more. It seems as though they are deaf, they can't hear. This is Akhiru Zaman. Get off your high horse of spiritual and religious arrogance and step down, and become a little bit humble. And understand that this is Akhiru Zaman. Gog and Magog were released into the world in the lifetime of Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. But you never hear them talking about that. None of these distinguished Islamic movements, none of them. The Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that Gog and Magog would pass by a river and drink it dry. They would be the trademark of Gog and Magog. One of the trademarks would be the waste of water, <laughs> overconsumption of water. A man was performing wudu. And Nabi Muhammad wasalam, was passing by and saw him and stopped him and asked him, what is the explanation for this israf, waste of water in wudu? The man asked, O Messenger of Allah, is there such a thing as israf in wudu? Yes! said the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, do not exceed the limit, even if you have, help me somebody, even if you have huh? a running stream of water before you, no shortage of water. What is the limit? Here is the limit. This hat will hold more than the amount of water we are supposed to use in wudu. And yet they say, we are the rightly guided. <laughs> we are the ones who are rightly guided. This is the amount of water you're supposed to use in wudu. Along comes Gog and Magog. How did the Prophet 
sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam perform wudu if you do not do know this would you know about islamic political theory i ask this to ikhwan al muslim who has made such a mess of egypt they do not deserve to ever 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 rule over egypt again never the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam will lift the container with his left hand and pour some water on his right hand why because he has to use the right hand as a cup to dip into the container and this is the amount of water ordained to be used in every act of wudu do they know this those who have such spiritual arrogance we are the rightly guided and when the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam was finished with his wudu if there was any water left in the container he would drink it but the companions would be rushing to try to get that water too but you have somebody standing by shouting at them bid'a and haram yeah <laughs> they would be rushing to take the water to wipe rub it on their bodies along comes gag and magag and he has corrupted their wudu and these glorified spiritually arrogant people are not even conscious of the fact that they have lost their wudu no longer do you have to wash the right hand because the water is coming from a a pipe a faucet well if you're using a faucet or a pipe a tap you have to take one hand and open and close the tap to fill this much water Have you in your entire life ever seen anyone do that? Have you in your entire life ever seen these in- spiritually arrogant people who declare themselves to be the spiritual champions of Islam? Have you ever seen them performing wudu? And yet they come to tell us we are so sup- we are inferior to them. They would even sit in our company when we talk. Oh no! As soon as the salat is over, they get up and they leave. They don't want to be in our company. They are the elite. They are the elite. They live in a kind of a comfort zone, and they don't want to be disturbed in their comfort zone. So let us disturb them tonight. So you're performing, you would do. <laughs> And now you are washing your mouth but the water is still flowing and you are washing your face and shame on you shame on you shame on you the water is still flowing and yet you come to teach us about islamic political theory huh? and you cannot even perform wudu what rubbish what nonsense learn to perform wudu first <laughs> before you seek to give to the muslims political guidance and economic guidance and monetary guidance and guidance in social affairs at the end of this wudu if you collect all the water which was used it might fill this 10 20 30 sometimes 50 times <laughs> 